Down in Blackpool, 16-year-old Tasha is already a mum to three-month-old Maisie. I actually wasn't using any contraception with Maisie's dad and it was actually the first time that we'd slept together and I always thought, oh, the first time, it's not going to happen to me. I was actually really shocked. I was dumbstruck. It took me a long time to come round to the fact that it's real. My 15-year-old daughter is having a baby. Long before she fell pregnant, Tasha was a wild child. Well, I was a stereotype for a teenager. I'd go out and I'd come in at silly o'clock in the morning and I'd be drinking and smoking, going out in boys' cars, driving about. And obviously she was going to the nightclubs, underage, mixing with the wrong crowd, um, sneaking out the property without us knowing. Where I have gone looking in the car for her and I've actually come across her and she's been in with the only girl in such a big group of youths drinking, walking the streets. Like when I said to her, look, Tasha, do you mind just coming home with us now? And then obviously the answer's no. And she didn't want to be tied down to rules or anything else. From the age of six, Tasha was a handful. What? She was disrespectful. Mm. She'd become aggressive. She would, um, she would destroy things. Cos I'd been brung up spoiled, I had to have my own way, and if I didn't, then that's when I'd just lose my tem temper. We couldn't have a social life no. at all. Couldn't leave her no. with anybody. She was having a big strain on the marriage. Um, my mum said to me, before I even got pregnant, when I was talking about kids, that if I ever fell pregnant, then I was no longer wanted in the house. Her parents stuck to their word and in late pregnancy, Tasha moved out of the family home she shared with her parents and younger brother Dale. Even though it might seem really, really hard, we had to do it because we knew if we didn't, we would be looking after the baby, which isn't right because it's Tasha's baby. Renting a house across the street from her mum and dad, Tasha survives on benefits. Well, it's hard being a single young mum, but it's have it, It's the house that makes it hard by having to run the house as well as look after a child and pay for all your bills and go and do your shopping. And obviously, I've got to have Maisie around everywhere I go with me, which is it can get can get stressful. Yeah, there are days where I think that I can't cope. I don't interfere. No. Tasha knows if she wants to help. She asked for it. When I used to live at home, I never, I, I never washed up, never hoovered. I'd only cut the grass if I got paid for it. Whereas now, it's like I'm, I'm having to do everything myself that I didn't learn at home. The house is in a bit of a mess, which I don't particularly like, but she is aware that once Maisie starts to crawl and babies put things in the mouth, she's reassured me that she will keep on top of uh, the cleanliness of the house and the clutter. I do this most nights. And other nights I'll do, like, ready-made meals, like a chicken burger. Cook super noodles because I don't have time to cook anything else, so... And I can't cook anyway. Yeah, I miss my mum's cooking. I didn't put the fork in, did I? No, I've lost the fork. 90% of teen mums live in other people's homes, usually their parents. I don't like living alone. At all. I can get fearful. Like, if a car comes into the street, I, like, like, look to see who it is. On top of the pressures of running a home, Tasha is trying to get Maisie's dad to take an interest in his daughter. He said that um, he'd come Sunday night, so he never came Sunday night. Then he arranged to me that he'd, came, that he'd come last night, but he didn't even come last night, no excuse or anything. I did actually have faith in him that he'd come last night. I want him involved in her life because, end of the day, he's a dad and nothing can change that, but I don't think I'd want him. Can you ever cry in? I rang you up to see when you was going to come and see your kid because it's been five months. You've seen her once in your whole life. That is sick. Twice? Oh, sorry, what, I had to come to you both times, yeah. You obviously don't care about her. Do you love her? Yeah. Well, do you not think that you're not showing that you love her? 
You need to come and see you, kid, and you need to get your act together, right? Hello? You just hung up on me. I have totally given up on him. This is a new year and a new start for us. I'm not getting involved with him anymore. He knows where I live, he knows where his daughter lives. It's up to him now. Having given up on Maisie's dad, Tasha has resigned herself to being a single parent and so her career has never been more important. Is that water OK or...? Although Tasha left school when she fell pregnant, she now attends college four days a week while baby Maisie goes to a childminder. Maisie was only six weeks old when she started college. Yeah. She's really putting everything yeah. she's got into it. Yeah. And she's so proud of what she's done. I want to start off when I qualify as a hairdresser by working in a salon and then if I get the right money to own a salon and then have Maisie working for me. <laughs> it's not only her future career prospects that Tasha is taking responsibility for, she's tackling the housework head on. I do miss living at home and I don't. I'm more independent obviously now, whereas if I was just to live at home then, I'd just be like, like, they'd just, I'd have everything done for me and I'd just have my arse wiped, which obviously being a mum now, I shouldn't be doing that, I should be like owning up to my responsibilities and that. And this is doing my head in. I'm going to use a different hanger. That's better. I've started fresh and I've probably got... I've got the best out of having a baby. Otherwise, I'd have been... I actually don't think... I wouldn't have had a life if I'd have carried on the way I was going at all. So having a baby's actually turned my life around for the best. For Tasha, being a mum doesn't mean all work and no play. <coughs> Cut all my spins. Are you tired yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> We've just done 304 spins. Well done. Tasha's trying to get on better with her parents and make amends for the past. What's up? <laughs> what have you had done? Another tattoo. Oh, no. Ah. Uh, what have you put on this time? It's a bit of a no. It's, my it's very nice. Do you like it? Yeah. It means that I love him because I've scarred myself for life for him. Good, though, a little bit it? of a shock. She didn't have to do it, but she's had it done, so what can I say thank you very much, Tasha? I've told them I'm sorry for stuff that I've done in the past, but I just got it done just... I don't know, because I love them. Oh, thank you. Very nice. That's not something you say very no, often to us, do you? It is so Weather. touching that. Shut up. Cos it means a lot. Shut up. Cos you don't have to say it. No, Shut up. Really yeah, right. I don't say it, that's why I get it tattooed, so I don't have to say I love yeah. No. <laughs> Whenever we argue and you say I don't love you, I do love you. I know. It's nice to hear you say it. It really is. You want to say it again now? <laughs> you said it once. I'll use words, you can use tattoos. Have you seen what Mummy's done? Don't you be getting any tattoos when you're bigger, will you? No. I had to have stitches when I had Maisie because when she'd came out, she'd came out um, of her arm like that, so her arm went like that inside me. When you were pushing, it was a bad way to describe it, but it's the truth. It's like a lighter, you put a lighter up here, and that was the pain, burning on fire pain. To make sure she can provide for her child in the future, Tasha's focus is on her next college assessment. I don't know, it's going to be hard to do. Why? Cos I don't have a mirror in front of me, so I can't put your parting in properly. Oh, you can just stand in front of me, can't you, to do my parting? Yeah, well, that's not the professional I know, thing. I but... I'm not meant to walk in front of clients. I don't want to do it tomorrow. Honestly, you'll be fine. Yeah, but I'm not bothered. It's a fight. I'll be all right and feel better if I've practised. I think sometimes she just worries too much that she's not good enough to pass it. But I just keep telling her, you've got to be confident. 
and be positive and you'll do fine and I'm sure she will. There you go. Thank you. Before Tasha can qualify as a hairdresser, she must complete MVQ courses by passing assessments. And you know you've got half an hour to complete your assessment. All right, thank you. Yeah, that's lovely, thank you. That's excellent. Well, you passed your assessment, which is brilliant. Yeah. Well done. Thanks very much. It's all right. <laughs> I didn't expect to pass because I've never actually practised on hair like that. I've only practised on long hair, so I'm really, really happy that I've passed. <laughs> I'm really excited about my future. I really am. Being a mum has made me grow up a lot. <laughs> like, it, it, it sounds stupid in a way, but Maisie has actually brung my family a lot closer together. She has turned herself around so much in such a short time by having Maisie. And it's like we've got our daughter back and our granddaughter. <laughs>